Every living soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are alive because He is alive. He is alive. Forever is alive. Amen. It's alive. That is why we are alive. Thank you, Jesus. Both online and in person, you are all welcome to First Square Revival Church. Our first uh, prayer point meeting today, this morning, is Finger of God. And the topic for today's Finger of God is effectual fervent prayer effectual fervent prayer and it comes from james chapter 5 verse 16 we know the story but i want to read from verse 14 to that point where i will stop and see why that statement was made to us amen, amen. praise the lord Hallelujah. praise the lord Thank you, Jesus. In James chapter 5, verse 14, he said, Is anyone among you sick? He said, Let him call for the elders of the church. Elders are very, very important in the running of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. It goes on. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed, both spirit, soul, and body. Amen? Amen. He continued, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. When James made that statement, then he gave us an example because we are going to pray. He gave us an example. The example is in verse 17. He said, Elijah was a man with a nature like me and you. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain. A righteous man. He said, the effective prayer of a righteous man. And then he said, he prayed again. And the Lord heard him. And there was rain. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is, you and me are like Elijah. He was born of a man and woman. He was not Jesus. We know the story of how Elijah put his head in between his knees and prayed and sent his servants. Go and look from the sea. What did you see? He said, I see after seven times. That means he portrays the point in Luke chapter 18, which Jesus said, men ought not to pray, not to faint, men ought to pray and not to faint. That we should not be weary. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray this morning. We know the word, the meaning of the word, push, pray until something happens. Amen. If he has committed sin, if now we are going to go before God, and ask for forgiveness. You may not commit any sin that leads unto death, but you may be you might have stumbled on some unclean things in the internet or television that has contaminated your mind. You must have you must have heard some story that has popped your ears of which you are not supposed to hear. 
You might along the way see what we are not supposed to see, and your mind just begin to roam round, round, round. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Or you might have spoken words out of anger to anybody within your immediate catch, and it constitutes sin. Let us go before God in prayer this morning. In Psalm 51, we know the story. The story of Psalm 51 was just David and God alone. Everything about Psalm 51 was me, 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 and me. So search yourself. You know yourself. I know myself. Ask the Holy Spirit to be in you. search light on you and remind you of anything that you might have done that may hinder your blessing today. Let us pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord, my this morning. I come before you in total humility and submission to you. God, in working with people in my job place, I might have spoken things to the owner of the job. I might have gotten angry because of the way he or she reacted. God, I've seen at this you. I might have heard those things that I'm not supposed to hear. Lord, out of anger, I might have said something at all. But at this morning, I ask for forgiveness. Most people will need some of with the blood of Jesus Christ. Forgive me and cleanse my spirit, soul, and body. Father, cleanse my spirit, my soul, my body, brethren online. I know you are lying down on your bed and watching this. Any position that you take and you are watching this does not matter. If every, anything that matters is your heart. So open your mouth and pray. The God. As I lie down on this bed or on my couch, in my living room, right down watching this program, God Almighty, within my immediate catch, I might have sinned against you. Knowingly or knowingly, I plead for mercy. Father, have mercy on me and forgive me. Holy Spirit of the living God, cleanse me from every filthiness. Pause my spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus Christ, He loves me. I cannot say why Jesus loves me. I cannot say why on Calvary tree Jesus suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say why Jesus loves me. He loves me. I cannot say why. Jesus loves me, I cannot say why. Ah, on Calvary, Jesus suffered for me. He loves me. Ah, Father God Almighty, Father God Almighty, the self existing God, the uncreated creator, the I am that I am. You know that I will see in one way or the other. You know we will see in one way or the other. That is why the only thing that you did not allow man to participate is sending your son Jesus Christ for the salvation of your, our soul. Jesus, forgive us. Any atrocities that we might have committed, knowingly or unknowingly, Anything that we want to hinder our blessings, anything that Satan, the devil, will want to stand before a righteous God and accuse us, Holy Spirit divine, let the blood of Jesus Christ erase it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, and we cannot thank you enough for forgiving us. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I need a touch from the master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time, 
Oh Lord, touch us one more time. Touch me one more time. Oh Lord, touch us one more time. Oh Lord, I need a touch from the Master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch us one more time. Oh Lord, let us open up our fire. Touch me. Touch any one of us with the blood of Jesus Christ that many are sick in the body right now. We stand in the gap, oh Lord. Father, we stand in the gap. As many that will come in here sick in the body, or sick in the spirit, or sick in the soul. As many that are coming here and they cannot make a definite decision to look onto the cross, but rise and fall in one way or the other. Holy Spirit divine, touch that person. Touch us one more time. Touch us, oh Lord. Touch my heart. Touch my body. Touch my bones. Touch my marrow. Touch my tendon. Touch my flesh. Heal me of any diseases that the enemy has inflicted into my body. Heal us, oh Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 25, from verse 16, Turn yourself unto me, O Lord, for I am afflicted and desolate. The trouble of my heart have enlarged, O God Almighty. Look down from your heaven and touch us one more time. Heal us, O Lord. Don't let the blood of Jesus be in vain in our lives. And it shall never be in vain. That precious blood, that speaks better things than the blood of heaven. Lord, he lost. He that man. He that woman. He that child. Lord, touch every womb that is yearning after new child. Touch every womb. God, touch every womb. Remove every blockade. Remove every blockade. And indeed, every broken will be removed. In one accord, we speak. As we are praying in the spirit, we come before you, God, in one accord and declare. Every blockade on our way, every blockade in the way of that woman, let it be removed. Let it be removed. Let it be removed. Holy Spirit, we solely depend on you. Holy Spirit, we solely depend on you. Remove every blockade. Remove every blockade in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, is there any blockade in the brain of any man or woman coming here or watching online or connected to any of the person that I've mentioned? That brain, that blockade be removed. That tumor will command you to disappear. That tumor will command you to disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, you said the fervent prayer of the righteous. We stand in the righteousness of the blood of Jesus Christ and speak for that the word that we decree shall never come back void to us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. But it will meet the very purpose that it is said according to your word in Isaiah 55. That as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, we have never seen it, O Lord, and it shall never happen. When the rain comes down, it did not go back as rain again to the sky. When the snow comes back, it comes down, it did not go back to the sky as snow. Oh God Almighty, every word spoken on this program, every declaration spoken by any of our brethren here concerning their lives, concerning their children, concerning the husband and the wife, Father, let it be the very purpose, oh Lord, and let it bring us fruit, oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, it shall never come back void to us. Lord, it shall be fruitful. It shall come to pass, and it shall manifest. And the prophecy of Jesus that came to pass, when Isaiah prophesied, and Jesus came to pass, and he became flesh and blood, and dwelt among men, and went to the cross for the salvation of our soul. Oh God Almighty, as many utterances and declarations and decrees, that your children here or online are declaring. 
it shall come to pass. Amen. It shall happen. It shall take place. There shall be no hindrances. There shall be no obstacle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you have forgiven us. Because you have forgiven us. Father, they will have a right of way. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name. We continue. That was said. Elijah was like me and you. And he prayed fervently. Brethren, from this moment onward, if we have been lazy in praying, especially some of us who are doing some heavy duty work or a long hours job, you come back, you feel so tired, and you just say, let me lie down, and I'll stand up and pray. Before you know it, you've taken off. It's the spirit of laziness. Let us pray against it. Open your mind and begin to decree. You spirit of laziness. I forbid you from infiltrating into my mind. I forbid you spirit of laziness from infiltrating into my body. That spirit that will not make me to pray as I ought to. I command you out in the name of Jesus Christ. I reject you. I divorce you. That spirit of laziness that spirit of laziness that does not want me to pray God in the night and worship God the way I ought to, I reject you. I divorce you. I command you. Out of our life! In the name of Jesus Christ, and return no more. We are children of the Most High God. Being redeemed and born with the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh God Almighty, we stand and reject every spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are going to pray and we continue praying, especially for the pregnant women who are right now in the hospital about to deliver, or those who are about to be wheeled into the theater for Caesarean operation. Let us pray unto God. God, we send forth your word. You are the Lord that he led me. You are the Lord I he loved. He said he was I he loved. You are the Lord, ah, you are the Lord, you are the Lord, that he led all. you are the Lord, ah, he said he was. Jesus Christ. That is there any that sicknesses come into our body because of sins? God Almighty, we ask for forgiveness already. We ask, oh Lord, 
because of our foolishness and our stupidity and our sins, we allow, we open the earth for the enemy to come in because of sins and disease filtered into our body. Father, heal us and we shall be healed. Heal us and we shall be healed. According to Jeremiah 14, 40, heal me and I shall be healed. Father, heal us. God, heal us. Jesus, heal us. Holy Spirit, heal us. Heal us. Heal us. And we shall be healed. Because it is written, by the stripe of Jesus, we are healed. Peter said, I handle it and I touch it. We are that same Peter. We are that same Peter. We handle you, we touch you. Heal us, O Lord. Heal us, O Lord. Deliver us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, let us pray. As many that have gone through some nightmare or bad dreams. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we have prayed, we have asked, and we have blessed us. Take all the glory and honor. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Love for Jesus, not me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. Even as you have led us into your presence. But I thank you, Lord, for all that you have to say. You know that you do. And you said your word will not return back to you, Lord. But you shall accomplish that which you have proposed. Father, thank you, Lord, even as we enter the second segment, Lord, the morning man, that you will teach us by yourself. Amen. You will speak your word of life and to our soul Amen. and body, and your name shall be glorified. Amen. Father, we give you praise and glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Amen. And welcome to morning man. This morning, we are looking into the word consent not. Consent not. We are looking in the Bible into the word of God, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10, which tells us, he said, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. We've been redeemed by the blood of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been called into this world to stand for him. You have been called to be his eye. You have been called to be his hand. You have been called to be everything that he purpose. Because he said, I am holy. Be thou holy. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. He said, I am holy. Be thou holy. To walk in holiness with God, it is a determination that you and I have to do. God will not come down and make us to be holy. He said, you are, the, you are the light that you should shine forth as light in the world. How do we shine as light in the world? We shine as light by what we know, by what we have received from the Lord, by what God has imputed into us. He has, put a, he has imputed a lot into us. First of all, by giving us the Lord Jesus Christ. And for this money manner, we want to look at what are the deposits that God has put in you. Because when you know the deposit God has put in you, then when people try to entice you, you will not move to the left, you will not move to the right. Amen? Amen. To concern now, when I was reading my Bible this morning, it tells me something like, I will, that the Egyptians go to war against the Egyptians. They fought against each other. They wrestled against each other. Why? Because they do not have what God has for them. They did not know God. The knowledge of God is beyond them. And when I was looking at that passage, then it now tells me, for me not to consent to be angry with my brother, for me not to be consent 
to go at war with my brother, then it means I have to discipline myself not to be, even if I'm angry, not to sin. That is tendency for me to be angry. Because why? I am, my spirit is at war all the time with my flesh. The flesh wants to take preeminence. The flesh wants to take control. And for that purpose, I have to fight against not contending with whatever the flesh is telling me to do. The flesh is always there to dictate. It's always there to tell me, this is what he wants. But the spirit, the Bible says that the, the, the power that is in me is greater than the power that is in the world. He said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If that which is in me is greater, then I have the ability, I have the grace to do what? Not to contend with the, the dictates of what the devil is telling me. Not to contend with what my, people will come with suggestions. Suggestions are good. But am I going along with that suggestion? Or am I fighting it according to the biblical word of God that I have? Not to be, not to compromise. Let me use that word. Because in most times we compromise. And God, God has not called us to compromise. He's either asking us to stand with him or to be out with him. If we, are, if we, are not, we are not in or out. We are either with the Lord or against the Lord. I pray we will not be against the Lord. Amen. So to contend not to be against the Lord, we must know our rights. What are our rights? The word of God. What are our rights? The name of God in our life. What are our rights? They are the privileges He has given unto us. There are so many situations that demand the truth from us. Am I contending with the truth? When situations demand that I lie, do I stand and say, no, the spirit, the word of God is truth. Jesus Christ himself is true. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. If he is the truth and the life, in situations of life, I do not have to contend. In circumstances facing me or you, I do not have to contend. I do not have to agree with whatever the situation is telling us. Because it dictates, the situation dictates all the time. But I have to know who I am. He said, the knowledge of him that works in me is greater. Greater is, I want us to hold up firm to that scripture. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That is what will help us not to contend. That is what will help us to fight against contention. That is what will help us to know and say, I belong to Christ. Because the word of God tells us, he has redeemed us by his power. He has cleansed us by his power. He has given us his peace by his, by his loving kindness. And the, what is the essence? Everything combined together enables us not to agree. Because when we talk about contending, we are fighting against something. So to contend not against the word of God in our life, we have, to, we, have to start, we have to stand and know what the Lord says. Praise the Lord. Amen. Knowing this fully in our heart, I want us to just bow down our head and tell God, God, renew your freshness in my life. Renew your power in my life. Renew your knowledge in my life. That I will not, I will, I will not contend, I will, I will not contend not against your word, but I will contend against every forces that is against me to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name. Father, we just want to thank you. We give you praise and glory for the power that you have deposited in us to fight against that every contention of our life and to glorify your name at all times. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's have it up for Jesus. Give your glory, love. Ask me all of you. We give you glory, love, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are what is oh, Lord. You are
around them. Thank you and thank you. Bless them in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of Mark, chapter 5, we see they are the man of the Gadarene. The man of Gadarene. The Bible says that this man was not in his right mind. The Bible says that this man was living among the, uh, 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 the tombs. And the Bible says this man was cutting himself eh, with stones here and there. But when Jesus intervened in his matter, he became, he had his right mind. The Bible says in verse 20 of that Mark chapter 5, that that man became one of the most powerful evangelists along the city of Decapolis. We are going to pray this morning. As many, many of our young ones whose minds are not right with God, as a result of mental illness, as many of our loved ones who, as a result of stress, as a result of depression, men and women that are so depressed, and as a result of that, had been, had been attacked with mental illness. Let's pray this morning that the Lord, wherever they are, God knows them by name. Bible says our names, he has engraved on the palms of his hand. We are going to call upon the Lord. Lord, everyone whose mind is unstable, Lord, intervene in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we call upon the Lord? Shall we call upon him? Father, we call upon you this morning as many of our brethren, friends, friends, men and women, Lord God of heaven, who as a result of the situation in their homes, they are, they are depressed, they are going through stress, they have, they, they have developed mental illness. Father, we pray this morning that Lord, you will intervene, you will intervene in the name of Jesus Christ, the man of Gadara, that man of gathering came to you, Lord, and as soon as you saw him, as soon as you delivered him, he had his right mind. I pray this morning, as many of our friends, as many of our brethren, as many of our sons and daughters who are in that situation, please, Daddy, intervene so that each and every one of them will be in their right mind. Thank you for hearing. Bless in the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want us to take this song all around, all around, anywhere I go, your love is around me. I want us, I want us all around, all around. All around me. All around. One more time, all around, all around, everywhere I look around, is all around. Amen. Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 2, it says, When thou walk in, 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 through the storms, when you pass through the waters, when you pass through rivers, when you pass through all those things that can bring disturbance into your life, he says, I, the Lord, I will be with you. I will be with you. I want you to pray that as we go into this week, into this, into, into the many days of this year, that the Lord God of heaven will be around you. His presence will be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether here in America, whether our people are told that the presence of the Lord will be with the child. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, this is our prayer this morning. We stand upon the authority of your word. That Lord, that when we pass through waters, Lord, you promise that you will be with us. When we pass through rivers, that you will, that the river will not overflow us. That Lord God of heaven, when we pass through fire, that the fire will not burn us. Therefore, I pray this morning that as we go into this new day, into this new week, into the remaining days of this year, that Lord God of heaven, your presence will be around us anywhere we go. In the name of Jesus, you will keep us, you will take care of us, you will bless us, Lord God of heaven, with the heavenly blessings. Thank you for hearing. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating all our young ones who are graduates of a class of 2022. Babies, some of them, all of them. You see, as, as, as we are looking at it, mommy said to me, say, look, you said you are celebrating. You are giving gifts to some people. He said, look, all these babies, some, there are some of them moving from one level to another level. Now that they are graduating. I say, is that so? And they are, they are, they are wearing a academic gown. I say, is that so? I say, okay, all of them, that we are going to honor all our graduates of a class of 2022. Next Sunday, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray for these children. Some of them are moving from uh, kindergarten to the next to the next one. Some of them are moving from elementary to uh, high school. Some of them are moving from high school to colleges. Let's thank God uh, on behalf of these children. Let's thank God on their behalf. Father, thank you. Thank you for the children that are given unto us. Thank you for the way you are helping. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are with these children. Thank you, Lord God of heaven, for enabling them to excel in their studies at various levels. We thank you. We thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They are moving from level one level to another level. We want to thank you for those of them, Lord, who are living in the elementary school to go into high school. We thank you. We want to thank you for those of them who are living in high school to go into college. We pray, Lord, that we keep these children there. Oh, Lord, your mark will be upon these children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bible says, because I put my mark upon you, ah, no one, no one will be able to attack any of them in the name of Jesus. Thank you and thank you. Bless them in the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The first Sunday of this month, we'll be having our International Missions Conference. The first Sunday of June, we'll be having our International Missions Conference, 4th and 5th of June. And the people are coming from all walks of life. We are going to pray that, Lord, at that conference, we are not going to eulogize, man. We are going to see you there. We want to see your presence there. In that, we want to see your power there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Father, we commit the International Missions Conference Coming up uh, from uh, 4th of June to 5th of June on your hand. Thank you for all our brethren who we come from Lord, from England. Thank you for those who we come from from Nigeria. Thank you, Lord, for your presence uh, at this year's co conference. Thank you, Lord God of heaven, for the way you are going to minister to us through the speakers. Lord, we give you praise and glory that, Lord, uh, after this year's come. Conference, Lord, we pray that, Lord, there shall be actualization of that, Lord, that we have been discussing. That, Lord, that we have been, we, 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 we have been told concerning the Caribbean war. We thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By May 30, through June, through June uh, 2nd, we will be going to Florida for the USA Four Square Convention. I want to start to pray for that convention that the, the Lord will glorify Himself even at that convention in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Four Square Convention or uh, coming up uh, in Florida in uh, from May 30 through June 2nd. Lord, uh, have your way, all our brethren. Coming from places, Lord, particularly those coming from outside Nigeria to rejoice with us on this convention. Thank you for bringing some of them here safely. Thank you for those that are still yet to come. We ask, oh God, all of us who will be traveling within America, we ask, Lord, for, for joining message in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need your presence here. We need your power there. Thank you for hearing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. The month of uh, May is set aside 
as our month of home on the rock. Home on the rock. <laughs> Joshua says, as for me and my house, we shall serve, I shall serve, we shall serve the Lord. I want to thank God for all that we have had. I want you to pray that, Lord, my home, let it be built upon the power of God. In Jesus' name, shall we pray? Shall we talk to the Lord? Father, this is our prayer this morning, that the homes of your people shall be built upon your power, the power of God. Thank you and thank you. Bless be the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for unto you that answering prayers shall all flesh come. We thank you. We have come unto you. And Bible says that this is the confidence that we have in you. That whatsoever we ask from you, according to your will, you answer us. We want to thank you for answers to all the prayers that we have offered this morning. For you, Lord, on Lord God of heaven, we give you praise and glory. Father, as we continue with this service, Spirit of the living God, rest upon the rest of all that we will do today. That at the end, your name and your name alone shall be glorified. Thank you for hearing us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All those worshiping with us for the first time, we commit them unto your hand. May, ha may they have a dynamic encounter with you, Amen. even in during this meeting, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that by the time this meeting will come to an end, none of us shall go back the same way we came. Amen. The glory is yours, and the blessings shall be for every one of us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, if today is your first time fellowship with us in Africa Church, we'd like you to stand up for recognition. Oh, the Father. We are joined there with a song. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. Oh, we are one. We are that. Oh, the Father, we join there. We are joined with the song. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. So welcome to you in the name of Jesus. And the Lord who has brought you here with pure righteousness in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, on behalf of the church and our senior pastor, Reverend Richard Lulibi, who will be meeting with you immediately after service, we say welcome to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our weekly program will still remain the same on Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. as the day we will do our Bible studies. We study Bible for that one hour from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on Friday from 11 p.m p.m. to 1 a.m., that's a two-hour hours program, we we'll pray, we we'll pray for two hours. And on Sunday, the service starts 10.30, and we expect everyone to be here before the time, so you can join us in our, uh, in our program. Like in the morning, we get finger of God, we start with finger of God, after which we move to morning manners, which is our morning devotion. Then after that, we move to praise and worship service. And may the Lord bless us as we join in Jesus' name. That is the conference line shown on the screen. 
in case you don't know, is 855-729-9926. That's the church conference line that you join to. And the Lord bless us as we join. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, oh, Daddy has announced most of the announcements. Yeah, the last Sunday, yeah, he, he, he prayed, but we're still coming together to celebrate all our graduates. Those people that graduate the year of uh, 2022. So, we're coming together on the 29th. That was the last Sunday of the month to celebrate with them. Amen. Amen. And he said from May 30 to June 2nd, he prayed over them. That's a four square convention in Orlando, Florida, Orlando, Florida. And for those who cannot go there, uh, you can join through foursquare.org. You can download the program there so you watch it there live. Amen. Amen. And an international missions conference too, coming on on the 4th and 5th uh, of June. That's a Saturday and Sunday. No, we had it before, just like yesterday, and another one is just by the corner. So we we'll pray to see more in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are having uh, people coming from all over you know, to join us. So in that case, all members are encouraged to attend. If you have others coming from outside, what about we, the insiders? So you are all encouraged to join. I mean, the Lord bless us as we come in Jesus' name. Amen. And round it up on uh, Sunday, we are changing some uh, some people's, uh, uh, what's it called? Like Mr. or brother. So to Dickens and uh, Elder. So I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> we'll round it up. And those are brother in the room. Brother Alabi and Brother Tolobo share. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to welcome our dear sister. You are welcome in Jesus' name. And all those who accompanied our sister, you are very much welcome. The Lord bless you. My name is Richard Oloid. Hallelujah. We also want to welcome a servant of God who has come ahead of many ministers of God that will be receiving this year in a convention. And of course, our mommy is here, uh, the Christian education woman in Nigeria. Hallelujah. Reverend Diola Adewale. I'm sure many of you, or some of us, still remember our dear sister. Thank God for her life. Thank God for the way the Lord has been sustaining her and the children to God be the glory. And the, the husband has joined the saints triumphant. And we want to thank God for the way God has been keeping Viola since our brother went to meet with the Lord. To God be the glory. You remember the those of us who remember the, 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 the message Pastor Adewale preached last year. Those of you who go through some of these things, you will remember that he was talking about heaven, heaven, not knowing that God was telling him, Hey, my son, I'm bringing you there. And God, the Lord will keep all of us too. And uh, the Lord God of heaven will keep us not to miss the heavenly race. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, Sister Viola, you are welcome. Hallelujah. These, these, are, these, are, these are the ones taking good care of me each time I go to Nigeria. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like the husband, you know, in those days, when we started this work, we knew how God used them. Use this family. I won't forget that. So when we came here, he said, Daddy, the workers uh, is already grounded. I said, Yes, yeah, but we still need more hands. 
we need more help because we have we have not started where we are going. Where we are going is our main auditorium. And by the grace of God, we want to get there Amen. as from now. Amen. And we are looking forward to some of our friends. You know <laughs> and some of our friends who are online. You know what I mean? Yeah. All our friends online. And those of us here, we, you see that I was telling them that building auditorium here is not like the way we build in Nigeria, where we build in stages. They won't allow it. Well, what we have done is to say that we are having it in phase one, phase two. So we want to start in phase one. And by the time we start it, the Lord God of heaven will bring all the resources. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, Sister Diola, you are welcome. God bless you. Come and say hello to us. <laughs> we want to hear your voice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate God for everyone and for the new glory. And the glory of the latter end shall be even greater in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm glad I'm part of it. I've been watching online, but now I'm here. And I want to appreciate God for my friend, the visitors who welcome. It's my friend, Pastor Mr. Ruby of Redeemed uh, Christian Church and her daughter and granddaughter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Master Jesus. Hallelujah. We all know it's time for tight and offering. Let us bring it up. It's time to receive blessings from the Lord. See, the Bible says, Bring ye all the tight into my storehouse. This is your storehouse. Your storehouse is not in Nigeria. <laughs> this is where. <laughs> this is where you receive your spiritual food. You cannot go to McDonald's to buy food and tell them I want to go and pay in KFC. We all know what will happen. You know, and uh, God Almighty will bless us as we do so in the name of Jesus. And it is good to be faithful unto the Lord. And God Almighty will be faithful to you in all things. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we bring out our tithe and offering unto the Lord and raise it up unto God? Use it as a point of contact to all your needs, both spiritually and physically. God Almighty is here, is ready to bless you, and is ready to answer your prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Eternal Rock of Ages, we worship and we bless your holy name. We thank you, O oh God, for your provision. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, O oh God, because out of the abundance that you have given unto us, we have brought this token, O oh God, before you. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you will bless it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, dear Lord, that you will add flavor unto our work in the name of Jesus. Add flavor unto our homes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let everything about our lives be sweet. Amen. To your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, oh God, for the blessings of the Lord that added no sorrow. Let it be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, we pray you will promote us and preserve us Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As many as are looking unto you, Lord, for one thing or the other, we pray that their expectation shall not be cut short in the name of Jesus. We pray that this month, before this month ends, each and every one of us, we will receive letter of joy in the name of Jesus. As many as are saying amen to this prayer, Father, Lord, let them receive letter of joy in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Every living soul, praise the Lord now. Hallelujah. Every living soul that you know and you know that God is your God, and that is why you are still alive today. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Those who are dead are not praising. So why we are alive, let's praise Him. It's like we are saving in our account. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, to start with, I will first of all honor my daddy in the Lord, the grandfather of the house, Reverend Richard Oloidi, for giving us this opportunity to come to this puppy to come and pray. And it is not by our power, it is not by our might, it is not by our righteousness, this is just by the grace upon our life. Father, we thank you, Daddy, we appreciate you. Mommy, we thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Baba, we appreciate you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for your faithfulness upon our life. We thank you for your favor. The road that we ply, that we are alive today, many people plied it and they were dead. The food that we eat and we are still nourishing our body, many people took that food and they were dead. Lord God, we appreciate you. We did not take this one for granted. Lord, as we are going to listen to your word, Lord, let your people hear from you direct in the mighty name of Jesus. I hide myself under the cross of Calvary. Lord God, let me speak of your word. Do not let me of my own word in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' majestic name we have prayed. Jesus must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. My Jesus must be honored in my homes every day. Jesus must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. My maker must be honored in my homes every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our month of homes on the rock. And we are going to pray, Lord, honor yourself in my home. Honor yourself in my home. Because the problem of this world is homes are the genesis of it. All the problem that is happening in this world today is from homes. Hallelujah. 
the president that is not doing the right thing is somebody's son before. This wife that is a minister that is not doing the right thing is somebody's daughter before, before becoming somebody's wife. So which means if fathers and mothers neglect their duty and they do not do the right thing, that is the result of what we are passing through in this world now. It is not only Nigeria that is now in crisis. Many people and many countries are in crisis just because of the failure of parents. And you will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not fail God in Jesus' Amen. name. God has assigned you to be the caretaker of these children. You will nurture them in the right way. You will not mislead them in the mighty name of Jesus. And that leads us to our today's topic. The topic today might look somehow different because I'm a drama somebody and my message normally tune towards practical things. And the topic today is tenants. Look at somebody and say tenants. Tenants. Tenant. Tenant. Yeah. The home on the rock. God did what? He built this home for me and you. He put me and you there as a tenant. And he gave us assignment. And that is why our today's message has been split into three sections. And number one is the lease agreement. Hallelujah. You'll be wondering, are we doing housing project today? <laughs> lease agreement. That one, let's look our, let's quickly look at our Bible. In the Genesis 2, 15, and uh, Genesis 2, 15 and 16, you will see the genesis of lease agreement to our forefather. It is not today that many people have broken lease agreement. Let's open our Bible quickly, please. And the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Hallelujah. That is the least agreement given to Adam. He said, Keep it. No choice. This one eat. This one don't eat. You will see in your lease agreement today, when you want to sign some area, you will see that this house, you don't bring pets. By the time you bring pets, you are looking for trouble. This house, you don't smoke. By the time you be, so those are the lease agreement between man and man, between apartments and the occupants. But now God is giving all this kind of lease agreement to either. He said, keep it. Nurture it. Trend it. Make sure everything is in order. You cannot imagine if somebody gives you a house and the day he's coming back, no matter the kind of work you are doing, if you sell car or you sell junk car and you now put a carcass, a, a cast in front of that house, you raise the leg up, you remove the tire, you put the engine down, you put the transmission down. The man will call you, man, this is not right. And you are not doing the right thing. If you don't desist, is going to affect you. That is the lease agreement. That is what really happened to Adam. Adam did not keep into that lease agreement. The man was moving up and down. And he gave Satan opportunity to come and deceive the woman. Hallelujah. The God that we serve, he knows that man needs woman to be his helper. And at the same time, this woman also needs this man to be an encourager, to be supportive, to be with him. Brothers and my sister, I don't know where you marry each other. Some even marry themselves in the church because their name is Jacob. The name of the woman is Hannah. The name of woman is Elizabeth. And some, they marry themselves in clubhouse. Some marry themselves in parties. Some meet themselves on the street. It doesn't matter where you meet your wife. That is how God wants you to meet that person. Someone that you meet in clubhouse can become an evangelist tomorrow. Don't just run down somebody. Keep to your own lease agreement. 
Take care of this woman. Take care of this home. Lay good example. The Bible said the man shall be the prophet of his own house. Lead your wife into prayers. Call your children and say, let us pray together. Don't just neglect your duty. Don't let just wait, okay, my children have gone to school. That is the end. You are entrusting the life of your child for almost eight to ten hours into the hands of a stranger. The teacher you don't know, the school bus driver you don't know, the environment that you don't even know that your children are going, and you are 100% comfortable, and when they come back, you didn't even ask what happened in your school today. Like I used to ask my son, what happened today? He said, no, Martin. I said, everything is normal, but let me know everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, oh, this man is, your wala is too much. <laughs> I will be wahala because I don't want to cry in the future. I don't want to cry when I'm supposed to be relaxing on my arm chair and be waiting for the alarm of my food uh, or peeping to do gang gang on my phone. I don't want no police call that your son has done this. No, that is why I must put more effort now. Parents, we have a lot to do. If God has blessed you that you find yourself in the land of America, it's a test for you. It's a test for me. Land of America is another pressure. How to raise kids. Because as you are dragging the kid in, many are dragging them outside. And if you are that kind of a slack man in your home, you are finished. You are finished. That is why God is telling Adam. He said, keep it, nurture it, tend it. All those keeping and all this is not just a matter of taking a class and be reading. Sometimes a man will sit down and be listening to the conversation of his or her son with somebody else. Not that he's going to interrupt at that time. He will listen and know the end of that discussion. And the end will call your son. My son, come. That's your friend is from where? You take it lightly. If you take it hard, he will just close that gap. He will return back to his shell. We are into critical message today, brothers and my sister. We know we read our Bible every day, but we don't practice what is in our Bible. That is why God has given this topic to this, our, to our Father in the Lord, home on the rock. God has built this home. That is why in the book of Psalm 127, verse 1, the Bible makes us to know, it said, unless God build the home, the laborers labor in vain. Me and you will not labor in vain in Jesus' name. Because God has done his own part of this duty. God has built this home for me and you. He has put it on the rock. Man, let's keep it. No matter how strong my house is, even the house of America, they are not strong. I don't know where those big men are living now. But the kind of one that I'm living, if I put a strong punch on the wall, it will penetrate because it's a she body. So you now open your eyes, your child is taking hammer and be knocking door and the wall, bah, he's taking nail, knocking. He's writing, he wants to write, he can't take his book to write. He's writing on the wall, on somebody's wall. He battered the whole house. I watched a program one day, they took one woman to court just because. The son was writing one, two, three on the wall. And the owner of that house said, he has damaged my house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't treat your child as if to say they are your parents. In America, that is how they treat their children. You can imagine you go to the mall and you see a child of three years old putting things down from the rack like this. You're putting them down. And the mother will say, stop, stop. Sometimes when I'm there, I will look at the mother and the son with one kind of eye. You will know that this man is not a joke. How will you just be pampering a child? And the Bible said, do not do what? Do not pamper this child so that they will not become a problem for you in future. You spare the rod and spoil the child. If somebody is telling you, don't touch your child, don't do this, it's emotional stress, they are planning your end. 
to be like that of a man that has neglected his duty. Because they will not be there when this child will be giving you problem in future. They help you to stop to spoil them in the name of, oh, you love your child. I pick a lady one day with, uh, with her son, a son of like seven years old. And the woman was, you know, when you pick somebody on a lift, they want to disturb you with some kind of uh, irritating uh, discussion. Sometimes I don't even answer. Sometimes I answer. This man was asking me, man, do you know where we are coming from? They cost the child out over there. Somebody cost that child out. I said, oh, it's not good. So he was asking the child, have I cut you out before in my life? He said, no, anything I do, it's okay. So you see your life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All those things is a gimmick, it's a strategy. So that that child will not be useful tomorrow. They, you think that you are you are showing love. You are not showing love. You hate that child. From that day, you burn that child. You hate him or her. Hallelujah. Brothers and my sister, we are in a family month. We are in family year. All our life is family matter. The child today, the problem in the church today is from each family. The problem in the street is from one family. The problem in the nation is from a family. Then what are we saying? That we are saying too much about family? No, you can't say too much unless you cannot say enough. Love these children. My mom will say, You understand that uh, tongue? <laughs> that what they use to, to take care of a child is in the market. Baggy market in Ibadan, you know, where they sell toys, they sell this thing. Those are the places you can go and buy things for your child in those days. You can go to Walmart and buy toys for your child. But when you see your child doing the wrong thing, correct him or her immediately. If he need you to draw that child inside, if you don't, you don't want them to see any mark on this, hold that corner, pinch, pinch with cloth. Don't even pinch direct. When you pinch with cloth, the place will not read. Hallelujah. I have been a volunteer in my son's school when he was in middle school. And it's a volunteer parent, and we went there. All what they were telling us there, my brothers and my sister, they don't love these kids. They were telling us when you see a child that is not looking cheerful, call that child and ask, are you happy at home? If a child is not happy at his own house, are you the father or you are the mother that will make him or her happy outside? They were planning foster home for your kids. And they said, if you see that kind of a child, let us know. We will send people to that house. They don't love them. I don't say you should be treating your child like a goat, but do the right thing at the right time. That is least agreement on everyone that is occupying that home on the rock. Now we move to the duties of the occupants. The duties of the occupant, praise the Lord, praise the living Jesus. And number one, you see, we are just saying, uh, husband is the head of the home. Husband is the head of the home. No, that is how God arranged it. But now, women are taking over. Women are taking over. Don't say I am sexist or what is my daughter would used to say. Sometimes when I say something that is to women, say, Daddy, you are sexist or you are, I say, okay, whatever. Praise the Lord. You will see when a man is in the house and the wife will be telling the children what to do and not what to do to their father. The parent, the mother has different way of telling the head of their children towards them alone. I remember when we were young, although I come from a very polygamous family, my father married six, and my mom is the first wife. But every of the mother will call their children, my mother will be telling us, kill her like of me. Praise the Lord. Because you want to know everything. And you will see a child that will want to give his father money. After he has called his father into the room and gave the mother like 100,000, and he said, what of the other envelope? Oh, it's for daddy. How much is there? 
is 50. No, 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 it's 20 for you. What is he doing with money? And he will collect that envelope and he will remove 20 again and say, go and give 30 to him. Hallelujah. And when this man was paying the school fees, like where we come from in Nigeria, not here that uh, uh, this beginning is like uh, your bucket. It's when your son or child enter into college that you will pay all you didn't pay before. Hallelujah. When the father was paying the school fees, they did not ask nobody, don't give this man money. This man will struggle alone. And we are saying men are dying young. Men are falling at the bathroom. Why women are not falling at the bathroom? Men have put themselves under serious pressure. And the man that did not even take care, did not think, did not have his medulla oblongata working 24 7, will go and do what? Marry seven wives. In the name of what? I am not happy with this woman. He's giving me wahala. You want to go and bring another wahala times two. And that will make you not to enjoy your old age. Because none of these children, all of them, their mother will draw them for themselves. And you will be alone. I've seen a lot in my life. I've seen old man that has children, grown up, doctors and all these things. This man will wear boxer. The oil has put on that boxer. Nobody to show this man your cloth is dirty. He will carry plate. Hey, you ever mean? Hey, you ever mean? Come here. He has children. The children have taken their mother in the name of Omugo. They want to go and take care of my, my grandchildren. They will leave this Baba alone in the house. Baba will be struggling. They will take this Mama away. Three months, six months. Immediately they finish that one. Another one will say, oh, Daddy, you miss Mommy? No, I didn't miss her. And they will take the woman again to another house again. Before you know, one day somebody will call. Ah, mommy, uh, we have not seen daddy since yesterday. Grandpa has not even opened the gate. And when they go there and see this grandpa, grandpa has vomited, grandpa has poop in his body, grandpa is rolling on the floor. Nobody to help him. That is where you know that the man has failed his duty by doing what? By neglecting his assignment as the head of the family. When you love your wife and you nurture your wife, you do everything. No child will take your wife away from you. When the child is, when the dog mother is going, you will be telling them, I can't leave my husband for a long time. Home. It's better you people go and look for nanny. I will just be with you for two months. I'm coming back. That is because you show love to this woman. That is because when this young lady was young lady, you were pampering her. My wife is, is, is here. I didn't marry my wife in the church. I, I, I was a Muslim before, and she was also Muslim, although she got converted before me, and she was praying seriously. This man, God will touch your heart. Some of men, they don't even know the size of undies their wife wear. And you are the owner of the warehouse. May God help you men in Jesus' name. Amen. Some men cannot even go to the market and buy things for their wife. But they can buy for girlfriend. They can buy for a lady in their office because that one is celebrating birthday. Just to show that they, they, they are a kind man. You are not a kind man, you are a wicked man. Buy things for your wife, not for your wife. Sometimes when you pick your wife to Walmart, and you say, well, I'm not coming in, and I'll wait for you. You are waiting, but you don't have patience. After like 15 minutes, you will be sending text message. Yeah, what are you still doing? They are let us go. You are running out of patience. You, are, you just want to wait to satisfy, and daddy took us to more, but daddy cannot wait. Daddy has so many problems. May God help us in Jesus' name. May God help us in Jesus' name. Ephesians 5, 22 to 24, duties of occupant. These are my wife now. Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. We all know what is there. I don't want to take much of your time. I said we are on practical message today. But let us read. Say, why submit to yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord, not as a slave, 
not as an inferior, but submit. And even if submitted to Adam totally, when Satan came and said, eat of this fruit, if we say, okay, thank you, I've heard you, you will hold it, I will wait for my husband. Many of women, you, call, you just take decision on your own, just because you are in control of your money. You are the owner of your money. I'm the one who, who, who suffer for my money. I can do whatever I want to do with my money. It's not submission. You are not a slave to that man. You are not a slave. You are just carrying him along. So that because God has made him the head of that family, he has given him one or two ideas that can save the whole family from problem tomorrow. You will see some people, when they have some housewife, when they have run into problem, instead of them to come openly and tell their husband, daddy, I did this, or honey, I did this, and the thing has backfired, they will still keep covering that mistake with lies. Many housewives have entered into wrong, wrong hand, wrong developer. They will go and be snapping pictures of different house and be saying, mommy, that is in there. Let me show you that uh, development now, where we have reached. It's a lie. Because they know mommy will not tell daddy. And daddy will not know anything until they finish the money of this woman. And at the end, he's still coming back to that man's head. And you are saying more a, a, a man's slump. Man will slump. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Woman, God said we should submit. He said submission. Submission totally as unto the Lord. As you, all of us are in the church today now, we are submitting unto the Lord. We are not submitting to our lady. It's unto God. That is how God wants me and you to submit to our husband. Carry your husband along in things that you do. As you carry God along in things that you want to do, carry your husband along. Daddy, can I do this thing? Daddy, it's not that you don't have brain. You might be a PhD holder and your husband is just a first degree holder. But in God's hierarchy, God has given that man some kind of intellect that he can see things sometimes. May God help us in Jesus' name. And he said, husband, husband loves your wife. Men has difficulty in loving. Because men, I don't know how we behave sometimes. When you are young, like 25, 26, 30, you got married, you look at this girl. Every time it's like you should be looking at this girl. By the time this lady gives back to one, two, especially three, that is when some men will be saying, ah, ah, hello, why everything is like this again? As if to say that woman made herself. But you can package this woman to still remain new every day. That is why I monitor all what my wife puts on. I make sure my wife buy good dress. The kind of dress that I will see on a lady outside and my eyes will be making flash flash. I will ask my wife, go and buy this thing. I like it. Hallelujah. My wife was going to one church before in Nigeria. They will not put the earring. They will not put this one. My wife was looking old. I said, man, I don't want this kind of religion in your life. I don't want you to be like this. Hearing or all those things doesn't make you to, to lose heaven. Trust the way that your husband will be what? Will be say, wow. Yes, you are not dressing to kill people outside. You are dressing for your husband. First of all, we believe in moderation. But there are some women, immediately they are in the house. I'm a housewife. You go and buy one Emily Kaba that you just look, no shape, nothing. And your husband is in the midst of women in the office. And you come back and your, your husband is sitting down. You put your shirt back at that. You mean it. Man! That man is a man. It's not angel. May God help us in Jesus' name. Package yourself. When we were in Ghana, and they say, Kusaribu Ghana, it is then I know Kusaribu Ghana. You will see a woman of 50 years in Ghana, she's still on canvas and a jean. And his grandmother. But in Nigeria, especially the tribe where I come from, 
Ijebu. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. Love, love your wife. And because God the commanded man, he said, nourish this woman. Keep her. Clean her up. You can change the look of your wife. If your wife doesn't know how to dress up, you can tell her, Mama, you have to do a low cut. Do a low cut and just do some kind of little palming on the other side and brush it one side. You see, when you look your wife, you won't stay much outside. When you have something that is enticing you in the home, what are you doing outside? But some men, because the house is not in order, they will say, I want to go to I want to go for fresh air. Adams go for fresh air and put me and you into that trouble today. Adams went for fresh air. And Satan came and he did what and deceived Eve. Don't go for unnecessary fresh air. The house is fresh enough for you. And don't let anybody come in between the two of you. Even when I was not a Christian, I was a guru. You know what you call a guru? You don't know. That time, I see her saying that I love this my wife. When she's cooking, I will carry bath. We are in tenant house. I will be washing clothes. We live in uh, Atoworo. Marika, I will be washing clothes. My wife will be cooking in the kitchen. My landlord will say, ah, what are you doing? Any for Only You are washing clothes. I said, yes, I'm washing clothes. It's because of my wife and myself. But some men cannot do that in their life. They can do it outside. But to their wife, they have in the house. They can't do it. They can't help their wife in anything. The wife is tired. And he say, oh, tonight, it's like I'm tired. He say, what of my food? You can't enter kitchen and cook. Some men, they don't even know how to cook. Only Indomie. Only Indomie. And uh, they will pour Geisha and meat and they will steer it like a sacrifice. You cook. And your wife will say, ah, they are not saying, eh? only true. That is how we should be, so that your home that God has built on the rock will not collapse. You will not destroy that house by yourself. If you like, let stranger come inside that your house. The house will scatter. Abraham did such. When God was saying, I am going to bless you with your own child, God did not promise Abraham to go and meet with a guy. And that is another problem. When Abraham is not comfortable with the instruction that God gave to him, that the promise God gave to him, and the wife was saying, hey, do this now, you at least. I remember when we were looking for fruit of moon. For 15 good years, we were here. I was hearing a lot of instruction. Many, many pressures. Somebody will say, oh, your wife has cooked vegetable for you. I say, if my wife has cooked vegetable for me, I've cooked a way through for her also. Because she is somebody's daughter, like I am somebody's son. The family also is waiting to see their grandchildren, as you, my parents, are waiting. And the day I met this lady, I did not ask her, are you going to have a child for me? All what I was asking, I love you. I want to marry you. I love you. I don't think about having a child at all. Why would that child now become the determining factor that will make me to love her or to hate her? Many men have missed it in that area. In the name of, oh, when you have a child outside, that one, the spirit of that one will bring your wife home. No. God did not promise you that. He said, you don't define your marriage bed. Many houses we have defiled. May God forgive us in Jesus' name. Many have defiled. It. It's not that you bring a woman onto your matrimonial home. Anytime you remove your clothes, you remove your boxer, and you go and meet somebody that is not your wife, you have committed the greatest sin onto the side of God concerning marriage. You have to do what? Be disciplined. Be disciplined. Look once. 
men, we are attracted by what we see. When you see a lady and you look at that lady once and your eyes make papa, don't look there again. Is I I am I'm telling you people, I was outside before, before Jesus brought me inside. I was outside, totally outside. I know so many tricks. And now that uh, social media has really forfeited everything, your phone is another problem. You see man hiding his phone for his wife. You are a cheater. Look at that man said, if you hide your phone from your wife, you are a cheater. And if a woman hides her phone from the husband, she also cheated. You will see some phone in the house. They have 1,001 password on it. And many has lost their life just because of that thing. What they are protecting will now be the problem that they will enter and they will go heaven. Somebody had an accident and he was in serious need of his people. They want to call his people and they want to open the phone and call someone that they know. Nobody can open that phone. The man cannot talk again. He has face opening. He has a tongue opening. He has a, a hashtag one, two, stroke, and next stroke. What is the problem? What are you hiding? What are you hiding? I am not a saint. I have done it in the past, but I thank God for the salvation of my soul. It is God that is now letting me to know, Holy Spirit, that is saying to you that all these things that you also have done before is even convincing me now. Holy Spirit is ministering unto me. You've done that before. And I know that God has delivered me. And as many as are listening on the, on, on the online, and you are still practicing all the little ways of uh, anki panky games in your home, God will deliver you. God will deliver women. God will deliver man in the mighty name of Jesus. And we go to the children. Their own is not too much. He said, obey. Honor your fathers and your mother. When your, 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 your mother and your father are telling you things, don't tell them to be old school. May God help us in Jesus' name. Don't count your parents to be old school. What parent will sit down and see at the top of the tree, if you children, you climb to that top of the tree, you might not see it. That is what we call wisdom. Don't count your parents to be too much. Oh, if, they, if you hear your, their step coming to your door, you are doing what? You are angry because you know they will correct you. May God help us in Jesus' name. The commendation from the homeowner. John 3, 20 to 21. The commendation from the homeowner. Because the homeowner will come one day. It will come for me and you. It will ask, how far have you spent your life? May God help us in Jesus' name. Do everything according to the love of God. As God loves you, love your neighbor, love your children, love your wife, so that this world will be the best place for me and you to live. If we Christians we were doing the right thing, the right thing, the right thing, this world would be the best place to live because we know the population. We remember in the book of Acts when they first named the follower of Christ as Christian because of their attitude. One of the writers said, do not show me your religion. Show me the way you treat people and I will know maybe I will follow you. You carry big Bible, you are going to church. But you are a wicked man. You are a wicked woman. You are a disobedient children. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. In conclusion, wives, do not compare your husband with another woman's husband. Do not compare them. If your husband needs some kind of brush of certain area, brush your husband up. Some men don't even know how to dress up. Some men, they will wear shoes without socks. And when they off the shoe, the shoe will be smelling. This is disgusting, like my son would say. But some things like that happen. It is you, that woman, that will be doing what? We say, no, 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 no. Socks is better. 
you put on socks before you put on your shoe. And when you off your shoe, don't go and hide it under where breeze will not blow it. Put it where breeze will blow it so that you will become fresh every time. Hallelujah. And husband, please don't compare your wife. If God has given you dark colored woman, accept her, nurture her, make her to be like that of what? Koro Ushin. You know, Ishin. I don't know English of Ishin. Ishin. Okay, let us call it Ishin. <laughs> so if your wife has dark as that Koro Ushin, let her be glittering, let her be shining. And if your wife is that of that, uh, if there's no never, no light in your house, your house is brightening. Then keep on polishing her. Don't compare your children with another family's children. When you are correcting your child, don't say, you can't be like so so person. so so person used to do like this. No. When you are saying that, you are making that child to feel insecure. And if you don't show love to these children, and they get it outside. My brothers and my sister, you are in trouble. May God help us in Jesus' name. None of us will fail God on the duty he has assigned me and you. None of us will fail God in the duty he has assigned me and you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because Jesus must be honored in our folks every day. Jesus must be honored in our children's lives every day. When they see your child outside, they know this one, they are Christian. We used to call them those days, Omodaji. They are Christian. When you see a child that is from Christian home, we call them in those days. When I was still in the world, we call them Omodaji Bele. Because we are the one who is going to collect all their provision in the hostel. We collect their provision, we collect their socks. Because we know when money and daddy will come and visit them, we bring another one. May God help us in Jesus' name. Because you might not be lucky if you are hearing me on the, on, on, online that God take you as he has took me, as he has washed me, as he's cleansing me every day. You are going to ask God now, Father, help me. Let's stand up on our feet. As our daddy will be coming to hand up, let's, let's ask for grace of God to nurture these children in the way of God Give me grace as man to love my wife the more. Give me grace as woman to obey my husband. Give me grace to do the right thing, to carry out the instruction in the lease agreement, to do the right thing as the duty God has assigned me and you, so that when the God has said, occupy till I come, he will not find you wanting. He will not find you missing. He will not say, oh, you workers of iniquity. Get aside from me. I know ye not. Father, let that one be your prayer now, brothers and my sister. Lord, help me. Help my family that I will not disappoint God. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. There is a race I must run. There is a victory to be won. Keep me true.
Once again, I want you to commit your home unto the Lord. Speak to God this, this afternoon. Lord, help me that my home will be built upon the rock. That it will be built upon the rock. Oh, is Jesus Christ, the rock. I want you to talk to the Lord. Father, help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Even Lord God of heaven, my home, my home to be built upon the rock, the rock that Lord God of heaven, my love for my wife. Father, Lord, we, the, the wine will not get exhausted, even at our old age. In the name of Jesus, you will keep us true. You will keep me, Lord God, you will help me, Lord God of heaven, to continue to love her, to continue to love her. You will help my wife, Lord God, God of heaven, to continue to submit even unto me, Lord, according to the, the, the fear of God, the word of God, in the name of Jesus, that Lord God of heaven, we pray that both of us, Lord, you will help us to submit to one another in the fear of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that, Lord, you will help me as a father not to provoke my children to rot. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory and honor. I pray for everyone here this morning that, Lord, all the duties, Lord, that you have given unto us, the woman, Lord, to submit to the, to, to, to the husband in the fear of the Lord. Lord, I pray that you will grant them grace to do that. Lord, the men, Lord God of heaven, to love their wife as Christ loved his church. Father, you will grant each and every man here represented this afternoon, Lord, the grace to do that. Father, thank you, Lord God of heaven, all of us who are fathers. I pray, Lord God of heaven, that you will help us not to provoke our children to rot. We thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory. We give you honor, we give you adoration. For you are the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, shall we pray? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for all things that you have done well. <laughs> thank you for today. Thank you, Lord God of heaven, for the service of this day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. Father, Lord, right from the finger of God, Father, we thank you that, Lord, that you enjoyed us uh, in your word that an effectual fervent prayer of the, of the righteous availeth much. We ask, Lord God of heaven, that you will help us to be righteous. You will help us to live holy in the name of Jesus. It is when we are righteous that we can pray and God will answer. That's why, Lord God of heaven, we are asking this day that, Lord, uh, you will help us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the, 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 the morning manna. Uh, we are, Lord, uh, you enjoyed us in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. He says, my son, consent not when sinners entice you. Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus, all those outside, outside Lord God of heaven, living in unrighteousness, they will not entice us to commit sin. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God of heaven, every form of enticement, Lord, hey, Lord God of heaven, in these last days, Father, friends, Lord, we entice people, even through money. Friends, we entice people, even through various activities. Father, we pray. Ah, he says, oh, my son, consent not, do not agree. When sinners entice you, I pray this morning that, Lord, you will help us to hear, Lord, audibly from you, when the sinners are speaking, that we will not be able to know that this is not from God. Any, any, anything, Lord, that is contrary to the word of God, we pray, Lord God of heaven, that we will not submit to it. In the name of Jesus, thank you for hearing us. And we want to thank you even for the message that we have heard. Very practical. Very practical. The brother says he was once a street boy. There are some of us who had to listen very well because we, some of us didn't have that experience as, uh, as a street boy. We want to thank you, Lord God of heaven, that you fed him out. You, 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 you converted him. 
you convicted him of his sins. And today, Lord God of heaven, is telling us out of experience what, what he used to do. Ah, and that was exactly what Paul was saying. He says, was I was this, but now this is who I am. We want to thank you that he is your son. Thank you, Lord God of heaven, even for the way you have enabled him, Lord, to make uh, the, 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 the exhortation, the message very practical, very practical. I ask some of us may be loving, but I pray that, Lord, from this, you will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. You will help us, Lord God of heaven, to go back home, to go back home. Where am I failing? And where am I failing as a, as a wife? Where have I failed to submit as a wife? Where have I allowed sinners to entice me? Where, where have I consented to sinners as a wife? Where, where am I hiding my telephone, my secrets from my husband? Father, I pray that Lord, at that moment, Holy Spirit divine, speak to us, convict us, convert us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for men. Father, that Lord, <laughs> and you say, men, husbands, love your, your wives. Love our uh, Father as Christ loved the church. Christ was able to love God of heaven, to give his life for the church. I pray this morning that Lord, all of us men, Father, we will not just be talking of submission, 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 but Lord, you help us, Father, Lord God of heaven, to love our wives with all our hearts. In the name of Jesus, to honor them to respect them, to treat them as human beings. In the name of Jesus, thank you for hearing us. Father, I pray this morning that all of us who are fathers, uh, we have talked about America, America, but not the Bible says, uh, fathers, provoke not your son, your children to rot. I pray this morning that Lord, you will grant us grace even to train our children, to nurture our children in the way of the Lord. Thank you and thank you. Thank you for this day. Lord, we are going into another week. Make it a week of blessing. Make it a week of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, may we hear good news. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. In the various camps. Even this week in Jesus' name. As many of our brethren, Lord, who will be arriving from Nigeria for the first world convention. Bring them here safely. In the name of Jesus. As many of our brethren who will be coming to Riverdale First World Church even for the International uh, uh, Missions Conference. Father, Lord God of heaven, grant them traveling message. Let it be a time of refreshing. Your name shall be glorified. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause the light of his countenance to shine upon you. In the name of Jesus, may we continue to hear good news in your camp. Thank you for hearing. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. In the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, abide with you, abound in your lives, even now and forevermore. Amen. Let's share together Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a blissful week. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to...